Hi folks, uh, right, thanks for looking in, all isolating in, in some style I hope. If you're managing to get all your, your provisions at this time, I go for a daily bike ride, but uh, since I don't meet anybody, the air on the road outside is no different from the air in my garden or in my house. Right, okay, I'll wear the paper all over this. Fabriano 130 pound studio paper. It's a good uh, paper to, to, to learn on. It's it's quite tricky to use, but it's half the price of, of the usual good papers. And I, I just bought a hundred sheets of it. You don't need to stretch your paper, let it wet it and let it expand and then as it expands just re-clip it. There's another one on the other side, I, I just had a bad start yesterday and I, I just quit. Unlike me really but... Right, um, I'm probably, I'm going to do a water scene, I, I like uh, sky trees, water landscape mountains so I put in a bit of a, a bit of a blush of uh, pull out any loose hairs this is a this ache's probably about four years old if you're going to put water in put the water in when you do the sky now I want some blue It's really worn out this one, but that's why I don't use it normally. But I thought I'd just give it a few days, a days grace. I'm using Cotman watercolours. And we'll put a bit of cloud in. We've got a bit of spring back today. Okay, let's do it like that. Okay, clean the brush. I'm going to just reclip. As you can see, it's uh, buckled up a bit here. Put it tight and give it a dry. So this is still a little bit buckled from yesterday. Right, okay, hair dryer. So take your headphones off while fast forward. Be careful, I hit it there. That's okay, the bird there. If I remember, I've got a cup of tea, so I'm determined to drink before it gets cold. I'm always conscious of the uh, fabulous lake districts in the UK, north of uh, Liverpool and Manchester. Uh, fabulous place. But then it's fabulous Scotland, I've got lovely flats. That Essex. Oh, I might even do Essex. Essex is, uh, is East Anglia, it's on the southeast side of the UK, and it's very low lying parts of it. And there's a little lovely 
salt marsh, especially along the River Cole that goes in from the Blackwater Estuary into uh, Colchester. It's not navigable up that far. It's, it's never, it's not dredged. So they can go as far as Rivenhoe. Uh, there's a lot of quarrying going off uh, on around there, Arlesford quarries. <coughs> beautiful area, beautiful. My brother-in-law lived there until he died sadly two years ago. We had some lovely times with him and his lovely wife. Right, um, I'm, I'll put in a bit of a d distance. So this is quite a not too too high. It's quite flat. I'm, I'm imagining I'm <coughs> on the uh, the dike that uh, runs up between Arsford and uh, Rivenhoe. It's a bit of flat lands behind. Now I'm going to use a bit of burnt number, but I don't use a lot of burnt number. Okay, they could be going uphill, so we'll rectify that. Right, now a bit of burnt number. Give a bit of a bit of a beach on the other side of the estuary. Sorry if my head's in the way. Now, well, plenty of uh, put a bit of pain scry in there. Plenty of. Uh, Sparkle in this because the sun be shining across the water. Just mixing it, just letting it blend in with that the beach, sandy beach behind. Okay, bit of a mess around there, but we're, I'm going to put in some trees and stuff in that. And I'll start the, the foreshore. <coughs> you can see paper's quite flat. I used to stretch my paper, pre-stretch it. What you do, you soak a piece of paper, not usually a small piece, but a large piece that you can cut up. Half imperial, which is 20, say 21 by 15, something like that. Uh, would that be right? 21 by 15? Yeah, 21, 15, 22 inches, that is. And what you do, you'd, you'd soak it, and I just soak mine in the bath. And then just let the excess water come off of it, drop off of it, put it on a clean board, a drawing board or something, which I have, under the eaves, which I don't use, um, and get a piece of two inch wide gummed strip, you know, the parcel stuff. Uh, use a sponge to or brush to wet it and then stick it on the board and over the paper inch all the way around then let it dry and when it dries it, it'll dry uniformly the paper starts to shrink because it's expanded when it was wet it starts to shrink but it can't shrink because it's got this gum strip around it and when it's perfectly dry you can cut it off of the board and You've got some, some lovely flat paper to work on that, that shouldn't buckle when you paint on it. But we're, to, we're cutting that process out we're straight on. Let it expand, clip it like you would normally um, stick it with a gum strip and then just pull it tight with your fingers and hey, hey, press that, off you go. Right, let's put in a bit of, a, bit of mud now. So we'll have a bit of panes bit of more grey and plenty of water and we'll uh, just uh, oops just too much water it 
So this is trying to give the impression of a low tide with plenty of water in the mud banks. Okay, now we'll I'm going to put some trees and stuff in there. Uh, now we want some green, so a bit of bit of yellow, a bit of panes. Now in here you've got sand fire, all sorts of lovely, lovely stuff. Then we'll have some shadow in there. So we'll get a bit of paint, a bit of bit of burnt umber. Now when that dries, okay. Now I'm painting from my memory of this, and I know that I'd be standing on a dike, looking out over the over the estuary. This is a little bit high, but I'm going to make it smaller by putting trees and stuff in there. If I make the trees a bit larger, it'll, it will compress hopefully give that impression of compression there. Um, now I know there's a, a lovely walkway, cycleway, pedestrian, artificially made dike. Well I imagine it's artificial. It's very lovely. Oh dear. Oh look what I've done. Um, and behind me there will be flatlands. A, a, a floodplain, lots of eels and stuff like that, and birds, beautiful, beautiful the villages. And here we've got some bushes and stuff that go around the corner, so I'm going to put that in. Um, I want nice rich colours, so a bit of, so, so, so a bit of, Oh, we've got a bit of dark green in there. Right, oh, we've got some darker green in there. Well, I'll let that dry a bit. Sort of pebbly stuff in there. Okay, uh, now put in a bit of a bushy tree. Oh, I know, before I do all that, let's sort this out. I'm going to use my small, or my medium uh, lake for this. So we want some very green, so we paint's grey, a bit of blue, a bit of water on the brush, a uh, bit of yellow. Okay. A bit feathery this one. It's lost most of its lots of it, its hairs and the edges are a little bit serrated. Yeah. 
There's some large uh, freighters going along here and up the coast, across probably Scandinavia, taking uh, aggregate gravel all over the place. I'm going to have to change this one thing. Okay, that'll do. That's enough. Oh, it's a beautiful day. Beautiful. I was about to cook on the barbecue, but my wife was, has other ideas about that. Okay, now I'm going to put a little bit of detail in, in here. So, very dark green, a bit of shadow. A little bit of shadow in here. Mm. Well, that'll do. Let's uh, go over here and put in some. Uh, some, some stuff in. Oh great. Okay, now we'll put in some uh, uh, so we will have some uh, green. I'm mixing just uh, ultramarine with uh, the cadmium yellow. Bit, bit wet. If you're struggling with your hake. It's probably because you're putting too much pressure on it. Got the shadow in underneath. Oh, let's get a bit of brilliant yellow in there. Okay, I can beat that up a bit. Bit of shadow there. Right now, um, there will be little boats at anchor.
Okay, not, not too much of this. It's a great yachting place, but a low tide, of course. There's a channel going down the middle of this. Let's just get a bit dark under there. Right, okay, now get an inch brush, or three quarters of an inch brush. And we'll uh, We can have a few little bits of uh, white. Ooh! Wow! Oh, 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 oh. Just a little bit of detail. I'll put that bird back in. I'm not boaty, so uh, don't hold that against me. They're just, for, to me, they're just objects on the water. Right, oh, that'll do. Uh, the components are there, we've got the shadow with the reflections, sort of. Of signature. It's a very simple, a simple one. It's a, nothing special. I, I just had a thought that I would do a, a fleeting thought that I would do something like this. There we go. Put it in the mount. Have a look at it. Now it's going out for masking tape. An essential item, I ask myself. There we are. Uh, could probably put a bit of riddle work in. And there we've lost some, some of it's where it's a blend. I knew that, I knew that would happen. It wasn't dry. Oh, that'll do, I can't. I'll ruin it if I do any more. Okay, so what we've got is uh, we've got the open sea there. We've got a uh, headland across the uh, River Colne. It's not. It's nowhere near accurate. It's, uh, it's just um, from memory. But I hope you like it. I hope you get something for, from it. I'll just raise you up so you can get all of that. There we go. Well, okay, so we'll call that the River Colne, Essex. And this is a very, very beautiful area. The whole, the whole East Coast uh, up to, well, the whole, the whole of East Anglia is, there's so much there. I live in suburban sprawl in South London, which is very nice, it's a very nice area, but we don't see this. We still have relatives who live around here. Uh, but I have to imagine my landscapes, that's why I've played so many of the River Wandle and from the Boardwalk and Morton Hall Park. They are our beauty spots. That's our, 
they're our lungs and uh, I'm very grateful to have them and to be able to paint from them. Right, okay, well stay safe folks and I'll see you soon. I'll get this uploaded now. Bye bye.